After the initial announcement of Bobby Spazov's fourth pro skate for Rosies, nicknamed The Candy, we now have an official promo. The video clocks in at over nine minutes and kicks off with Bobby showcasing his exceptional park skating skills, which are completely undeniable. He glides around the place effortlessly, launches high airs, spins at the speed of light and just looks insanely comfortable on transitions. I mean, just look at the hang time that he gets on this air. Beautiful. He also shows that he can more than hold his own on street. I mean, this 360 into this steep bank is ballsy. I also love this full speed wall ride. That looks like it was very satisfying to land. And this combo looks like something straight out of a 16-bit video game. You know I, brought it home to I also really enjoyed this naughty cess slide up and down, followed by quite a considerable height gap. What I like about this promo is it doesn't really feel like a skate promo. It feels like a mini movie. It kind of feels like a little Bobby Spazov documentary. He talks about how much he enjoys teaching kids. He talks about the appreciation he has for his friendship group. He talks about his home in Israel and how it's unlike anywhere else in the world and how he wants to portray that to the wider rollerblading community. And what I really like the most about Bobby Spazov is, unlike a lot of pros, he gives a lot of himself. A lot of pro skaters, all you get is the skating. They give you sections, they appear at contests, and that's it. They don't do podcasts, they don't do interviews, and even when they do, they're very guarded. They, do, they don't really, you know, give a lot of their personal life. Bobby is refreshingly honest and blunt. He is willing to pretty much tell you anything about himself, whether positive or negative. He doesn't take himself too seriously and once again in this video I just feel like he gives a lot of himself to the community and makes himself really endearing and you can understand why he now has four skates, why Rosie's keep giving him skates because he is he's a bit of a people's champ and it's really hard not to find the guy quite endearing. This video is a bit of a change of pace for Bobby. Normally he just gives us a straight street section or a straight park section or park clips, but this I feel like is just a lot more personal and I really like the change of direction. I really like what he's gone for here. As for the skate itself, I'm not really that into it, but I'm not down with the kids and I'm also not fashionable. So what the hell do I know? Now, I don't want to get anyone too excited, but we've got a new John Bellino section. Actually, I take all of that back. A new John Bellino section is always a reason to get excited. This first clip is the kind of combo that I dream about at night, and if my brain or body would just play along, I would happily reenact it in real life. I also really enjoyed watching John Bellino figure out this ledge spot, first with a cess slide to switch up, then with the spin grind spin combo. I have enjoyed John Bellino skating ever since he was a little teenager on Deshi, right up to his NIM and SSM days where he was just throwing hammers left, right and centre. And this newest iteration where he's just getting really creative and just exploring all the different options with an obstacle is unbelievable. Everyone said he's had one of the greatest comebacks in blading. I fully agree. And just any time he brings out a new section, any time he brings out a new clip on Instagram, I am just overjoyed. The only problem I have with this section is I take great offence to this line where he does a zero spin acid, then follows up by a hurricane sweat stance to true Mizzou because he just makes it look far too casual. You're making it look too easy, John. At least make it look like you're trying. This short but exceptional new section was released on a new YouTube channel called Bong Leech, which is a play on Long Beach. Thank you, thank you. Figured that out all by myself. Yes, I'm a smart cookie. 
They also have other sections on there. They've got a section with Tony Revituso, who Tony used to be sponsored by REMS and had some great REMS flow files back in the day, like 15 years ago. He also had a section in the shock video. He had a park section out not too long ago, which was unbelievable and here he is again again this is quite a short street section but tony has got great style laces some really nice lines which you see throughout the section and i absolutely love this alley out fish brain to full cab out that he does in this really small awkward looking spot i would never have thought to try that trick on that obstacle and if you've seen any of Tony's recent skating, you'll know that his toe roll game is on point and that is on full display here. It was also really cool to see this game of Super Mario Brothers that he plays on this ledge spot. And if you ever wanted an example of a great freestyle backslide, here you go. Another person who's got a section on the Bong Leach channel is Jeremiah Doherty. Doherty? Jeremiah Doherty. I've probably got that name wrong. He had a podcast on Wax Toaster, which was utterly fascinating. He's this really interesting guy. He's lived in Texas and Arizona. At one point, he was even making his own skates. And this section is just really interesting to watch. I love the way he lands out of some of the tricks in this. It's just really expressive and dramatic. We need more expressive, dramatic landings in rollerblading. It just makes the footage even more interesting. Also, this back rail to stair bash, mwah. If you haven't checked out the Bong Leach YouTube channel yet, check it out. I really like, like the filming and editing style they've gone for. It's really distinctive. I also really like the music. It's got that kind of fuzzy, lo-fi, garage rock style vibe going on, which I really enjoy. And if you look at the filmer credits, Carter LeBlanc is on there and so is Parker Richardson. So hopefully we'll be getting some new footage from Parker Richardson, who's sponsored by Them Skates. And Carter LeBlanc is responsible for the unbelievably good Chance of Rain series. He's also really good at skating himself. So who knows, we might even get a street section from him. But I'm really excited to see where this channel goes. And I can't stop watching the videos that are already up there. So yeah, if you haven't seen it yet, give it a look. We're halfway through the video, so I just want to give a giant shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're listed on the screen now. If you want to join the Wheel Scene Patreon, you can do so for as little as £3 a month. Also, if you enjoy this video, click the like button, click the subscribe button. I would very much appreciate it. In product news, it turns out that Blank are working on a flat frame, or they could potentially already have the frame out, according to a couple of shops. They've got this new frame called the TB64, which sounds like something at a Terminator, but fits up to 64 millimeters flat. It's got nice lips on the middle. Ugh, that sounded really weird and gross to say, but yeah, it's got lips on the middle two wheels to protect them and stop from wheel bite. And when I was talking to Cameron Talbot in the episode of Platform Podcast, which you can check out, I'll put the link below, he said that they were working on it and it would be out in about a month. That was about a month ago. And a couple of shops already have it up for sale. Thuro Shop have it up for sale and Extreme Inn have it up for sale. I don't really know much about either of those two shops, but no other shop seems to have it for sale. There's no mention of it on Blank's social media on Instagram or Facebook, and there's no mention of it on Blank's official website, but there have been some product teases. GSF, aka ESG, he's put some photos up of Cameron Talbot and you can clearly see him skating the frames flat. On the Blank Instagram page, they've also got a couple of images up there showing people skating them, but there's been no official word. So it's one of these situations where I don't know if the brand has dropped the ball and just not made an official announcement yet, or whether the shops have just put it up for sale when it shouldn't really be up for sale. And after being leaked last month by Inline Warehouse, naughty Inline Warehouse, USD have finally released official photos for the USD Sway Carlos Bernal. When I first th saw this skate, I thought it was blue and lime green. And it was only when I saw these more recent photos that I thought it might be purple. I asked Eugen Ennen and he confirmed that it is purple. It's just a really dark purple. And like a lot of skate releases recently, it has divided opinions 
thoroughly down the middle. Some people love it, some people hate it. I'm not that keen on the colorway. Someone commented online that they thought it was inspired by Joker because of the purple and the green. Someone thought it was inspired by Goosebumps. Whenever I see that colorway, I just think of 90s rave music. Camera's ready, prepare to flash. Remember when the Alex Broska Pro Skate came with like the rabbit's foot for his Valo? I would love it if they brought out glow sticks with this. That would be amazing. I have no idea what inspired this skate. USD aren't saying it on their Instagram. Carlos Bernal isn't saying it on his Instagram. Is it Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? The kind of slime effect? Is it Slimer from Ghostbusters? Who knows? It's up for pre-order for almost 300 euros, which is quite crazy when you take a closer look at it because it doesn't have any of the new Sway features. So it doesn't have the new buckle that's going to appear on the team skate. It doesn't have the alternative option for the 45 degree strap, which also appears in the new grey skate. And according to Mikhail Vietzman, they've sorted out the forward flex problem. I'm assuming they've just filled in the plastic at the back of the shell underneath the cuff. There's no mention of them doing that either, so it looks like the actual like design for this or when it got sent off to the factory was quite a long time ago, and I'm assuming it's more expensive because they've got higher royalties to pay, but it just is a little bit annoying that it doesn't come with any of the new improved features that are looking likely to be on the other line of Sway Skates. Also, what the hell is going on with this third promo shot? It's like the photographer went, Carlos, can you just go and stand on that and face the back and I'll take a photo of your arse in the back of the skates. Whose idea was that and what were they thinking? Although a new Carlos Bernal skate means a new Carlos Bernal promo and as someone who is a known stunt skater, loves a hammer, loves to chuck himself off huge things, you've got to kind of wonder how much higher he can go. He's already done the huge gaps, he's already done very technical tricks on terrifying obstacles and he has already done massive disaster gaps to grinds on handrails. You've got to wonder how much bigger he can possibly push that and that is a terrifying prospect. Although, maybe he's just going to go the other way and do something completely different and showcase his creative side or maybe steer clear of the hammers. Who knows, but it'll be interesting to find out. And in other news, is it possible that Jeff Phillip is planning a comeback? Jeff Phillip used to be sponsored by Vibrolux and Create Originals. He released a ton of sections over the past like decade, couple of decades. I actually paid for him to film a section for Wheel Scene, which was unbelievable. He's got a really unique take on skating, loves to utilise really strange obstacles. But his last section was Tripolar, which was out for Orange Wheel Company quite a while ago now, probably over a year ago. And in the description, he said that he was basically forced to make it by his friends and he just wasn't keen on skating anymore. After the section came out, he went on a kind of social media rant just about how he wasn't enjoying skating anymore, how he just didn't want to do it and he was stepping away from it and no amount of encouragement would con like convince him otherwise. So it's kind of interesting to see that he's now uploading quite a lot of content to his YouTube channel. Maybe he just wants it there for frame of reference. Maybe it's just a time capsule or something to share with his friends. But it would be awesome to see him on skates again because he is a very talented guy. And if you live in the UK, there's a new competition coming up on the 5th of August called Southport Jam takes place in, you guessed it, Southport, which is Merseyside. And there's not been that many events in the UK this year so far, although summer's only just getting started. So it's a good chance to meet up. It's a nice outdoor skate park. The weather is usually good at the past couple of events, and I'm sure it'll be a good time. That's it for the news. Let me know which story you like the most. Which skate do you prefer? The USD Sway Carlos Bernal or the Rosie's Bobby Spazov Candy? And yeah, Keep in touch. Speak to you guys soon.